Well, I want to dive right into the word tonight. I want to dive right into the word tonight. Uh, one of the things that we have been teaching in our local church here in Houston, praise God, for the past few Wednesday nights, amen, is on faith. And one of the things the Lord instructed me to do as we started dealing with this uh, uh, pandemic and COVID-19 was he said, I want you to challenge the people and teach the word of God to people and make sure, praise God, that their faith is where it needs to be. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. How Jesus said, the enemy comes to sift you as wheat, but I pray that your faith would not fail you. Amen. And so we want to make sure that our faith is strong and secure. Uh, for two Wednesdays, we taught in great detail as it relates to the shield of faith. Amen. The Bible says that you would, above all take on the shield of faith where you will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we, we talked about the shield of faith. We also last week talked about your profession of faith. And Hebrews talks about, amen, hold fast to your profession of faith. Amen. For he is faithful. And so we talked about profession as a job and your confession, that we have to watch what we're speaking and making sure that our words are lined up with the word of God. Well, I want to go a little deeper tonight Amen. I'm so stirred since resurrection. And I don't know about you. Amen. But resurrection is not just tied to one Sunday. Amen. But when you have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ living in your life, that's a daily thing. One of the things that stuck out to me as I declared the word on Sunday, amen, the scripture says that because of the resurrection, amen, we have a living hope in the Bible. It talks about that in Romans, amen, that God has given us a new birth and a living hope due to the resurrection. Now I begin to think about that. We don't serve a dead hope, uh, a dead God. We have a living hope. Why do we have a living hope? Because God keeps his promises. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. But if I've said anything, I'll bring it to pass. He told him I'd get up in three days and he surely arose in three days. So we have a living hope. We sing the song, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. I put my trust in your holy word. And the, and the exhortation goes on and says, and I have a living hope. So we have a living hope. So I've been thinking about what God is speaking. He's been telling us that our faith needs to be strengthened and that we have hope. And so tonight I want to teach, praise God, hallelujah, on faith and hope. And I want you to see the correlation, amen, of faith and hope and how it's necessary to the life of the believer. The scripture talks about faith and hope both being beneficial to the life of the believer. You know, you hear it all the time. You may say it, amen. You don't even have to be born again to say it. You hear people talking, praise God, oh, I hope this, or I hope that, or I hope so, praise God. And for many folks, praise God, them statements are as close as walking in the God kind of faith as they get. But tonight I want to focus on the difference between faith and hope so that you will understand uh, the relationship between the two. Because faith and hope are not the same thing. They are fundamentally different. Webster defines faith as an unquestioning belief, complete trust or confidence. And then when I begin to look up the word hope in the Webster, praise God, it says a feeling that what is wanted will happen or a desire accompanied by expectation, a desire accompanied by expectation. Now, when you look at Webster's definition of both words, one deals with belief and the other is a feeling with expectations. I like that second definition for the word hope, desire accompanied by expectation. The Greek and, and Hebrew word for hope also means to have expectation. The concept is involved trustful anticipation, particularly with the reference to the fulfillment of the promises of God. Anybody out there with me still believe in 2020 that God's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do? Praise God. Anybody still believe, even after all the things you've been through and even the stuff you're going through? My God. Anybody still believe that God is going through, you know, that God is going to come through? When will he come through? 
every time. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You ought to give God a great praise right there in your home for that because he's going to come through. Romans 15 and 13. If you want to write down notes, you can do that tonight. Romans 15 and 13, it says, Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul describes God as being a God of hope and that he has placed hope within us. You don't believe me? The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. Is that all right? And I believe, I praise God, you know, God, we serve a God of hope. The Bible says that he desires that all should be saved. Although we know that this probably will not be the case, praise God, we still serve a God that says, listen, I want you to be full of hope. That passing translation declares Romans uh, 15 and 13 says, now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate with hope. My God, my God, hallelujah. Now hope involves having a confidence and a desire that leads to an exercise of faith. And God says, wait a minute, praise God, I want you to radiate with hope. Hallelujah, I want you to shine in the light of my glory. Hallelujah, that's what the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father. I believe that as believers, we should have an attitude of hope. We should be hopeful, praise God. We should be believing in God, even when our backs are against the wall, even when we don't have all the answers, even when we don't have all the clues, your testimony should be, and yet I believe God. And yet I believe God. When we're walking in faith, we actually abound in hope. I said when we walk in faith, we abound in hope. Because our feelings are aligning with God's word and our desires are now accompanied by an expectation with confidence. And when that expectation is materialized, we know that God has acted on our behalf, praise God, because we are fully exercising our faith. Can I lay a foundation tonight? Can I, can I work this tonight? Praise God. If you're writing notes, write that down. Faith is present tense. Hope is future tense. Faith is present tense. Hope is future tense. And I want you to see faith and hope working together in your life. Faith and hope work together to give you confidence in God. Faith and hope are vitally connected. And it's important to understand the value they have together so that you can have unshakable confidence in God. What shall separate us from the love of God? Shall famine, shall things present, so are things to come? I don't know about you folks, but in this hour, even more, I want an unshakable faith in God. Is that all right? When I can't put my, my, my trust in nothing else, I have an unshakable confidence in God. Now, now, to be honest, both faith and hope have always been a little bit of a mystery. By nature, when you think about faith and hope, praise God, they both seem a bit vague. You can't touch them. You can't hear them, praise God, or see them, yet you see the evidence of faith and hope all the time. You see people, you believe God for things, and you see people saved. You see prayers answered. You have a joyful outlook to the future, praise God. And one thing we know is the vital connection between faith and hope. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so what's the connection? Can I prove my foundation just a little bit more tonight? Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. My God, I'm getting happy. And the evidence of things not seen. You see that connection. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of hope. My God. And hope awakens faith. The interactive dynamic between faith and hope. Faith gives life to hope. Teach, Bishop. My God. And hope strengthens our faith. You can't have one without the other. Faith is coming to agreement with what God is saying and hope anticipates its reality. 
I'll say that again. Faith is coming into agreement with what God is saying and hope anticipates its reality. And I come to let you know every promise, every prophetic word that God has given you within it carries life that can only be activated by faith. I don't care how many prophetic words you got over your life. I don't care how many promises in this book. Is that all right? You got to use your faith to pull it in. You got to say, God, I heard what you said and now I'm going to believe you for it. God, I heard what you said and now I'm I'm a contend for what you said. That God, I believe I heard what you said. Hallelujah. And now I'm going to do whatever I have to do. Is that all right to pull that in? The Bible says, according to the prophecies that have gone on before you, by them rage and warfare. You got to let the devil know. God didn't say it too much to me for me to give up. Now, if I didn't have a word, I have a reason to quit. Uh, now, if I didn't have a promise, I'd have a reason to quit. Praise God. But because I got word in my life, praise God. Why do you think I come to church every time I can? Why do you think I'm feeding myself with the word as much as I can? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody ought to write that down. I got to pull this in and I'm putting it in by my faith. Is that all right? I'm going to believe God that it shall be and it will not be otherwise. Oh, my God. Faith comes into agreement and believes each promise. I said faith comes into agreement and believes each promise, each prophetic word, each written word. Can I submit something to you tonight? Let me calm down because I'm getting real excited on a Wednesday night. Can I submit something to you? The proof of our faith is hope. When you have hope in God, praise God, we prove that faith is act, that, that, that faith is active. I said, when you have hope in God, you prove faith is active. So when you see folks, praise God, hopeless, you're not walking in faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Is that all right? Praise God. See, you got to understand something, folks. You don't just come out. You come out by faith first. You come out by faith before you come out in the natural. I said you come out by faith even before you come in the natural. Folk look at you crazy because they see you still in some stuff in the natural, but your head is already out. Your spirit is already out. And if you ain't got but $5 in your pocket, you say, but I'm still wealthy. But I'm still walking, but I'm still blessed and highly favored. But I'm still millionaire status. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. But I'm still walking in total health. You just got a bad report from the doctor. Hallelujah. My confession is, praise God, I am the healed of the Lord. You come out by faith before you come out in the natural. Is that all right? Can I submit this to you? Without faith, hope is only a wish. That's right. Powerless. But when we have hope in God, faith is powerful. And I don't know about you, but in 2020, I don't have time to be wishing. I'm not wishing upon a star. I don't need no wishing well. I can't get nobody in here. Praise God. Hallelujah. What I'm hoping in is found on something. See, I said hope without faith is only a wish. I don't have time to be wishing, praise God. I'm hoping, praise God. What I'm hoping is, is that my hope is built. Come on, we were singing all the time on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And my hope is built on something. And the Bible says, build your hopes. There it is again, on things eternal. If you want to see the manifestation of what you're praying for and wishing for and hoping for, praise God. Holly, you got to build your hope on something. A wish, a wish, praise God, is hope without God. Ooh, see la. A wish is hope without God. It's something we long for, but it's generally not connected to God. Biblical hope has its foundation, faith in God. And you got to check yourself because we coming out. I'm telling you, <laughs> we, we coming through some things. Come on. We coming on the other side of them. We, we moving into greater places. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And unbelief honors what we see as impossible. Unbelief honors what we see as impossible. But faith honors what we believe is possible. Woo! Unbelief honors what we see as impossible. But faith honors what we believe as impossible. So, so, so let me move. Let me keep moving through this. Is this blessing you? I hope it's blessing you tonight. Is it blessing you? Hallelujah. Because I'm just a little stirred up on a Wednesday. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, what am I telling you tonight, beloved? Hope looks to the future. 
while faith lays hold to the present. You know, like this song, love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carrot. That, 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 that's what faith and hope do. It, it goes together. Is it all right? It goes together. Hope looks to the future while faith lays hold on the present. You don't believe me, do you? Okay, I got Bible for you. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith. Faith is right now in the present. My active faith, praise God, is the substance of my hope. The reason why I can hope is because I have an active faith that's working in my life. Praise God. Go to Mark 11 and 24. Mark 11 and 24. Mark 11 and 24, praise God. Conference line people, I hope this is blessing you tonight. Mark 11 and 24, praise God. Jesus puts this into perspective. Praise God. If you're turning there, you can. If not, just drop this down. Mark 11 and 24, Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, all things, hallelujah, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. Believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. Two words I want you to focus on, believe and receive. When you pray, you don't have to, praise God, when you pray, you don't have to believe immediately, praise God. When you pray, you have to believe immediately that you have received what you petitioned God for. Believe is the present tense. Faith, believe is the present tense. It should be immediate once you pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Received in this verse is the past tense. Believe and receive. What Jesus is saying is once you pray, you believe that you've already received it. And although you may not physically see the manifestation in the natural for your answer prayer, you believe and act as if it's already done because you have faith in it. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Praise God. He said, when I pray, hallelujah, I need to believe that I've already received. Is that all right? Praise God. I believe that I'm already received. Praise God. I believe that God has already taken care of this coronavirus. I, hallelujah. I believe, praise God, I, I'm praying that things are already turning around. I'm praying that what we've been praying for, hallelujah, is already in the works and manifestation. Praise God. I believe and I've received. I took it to God in prayer and I believe that it is so. I took it to God in prayer and I believe that he's going to do exactly what he says. Somebody say it again. It's already done. That's your faith in operation. When you pray in faith, expecting God to hear and to perform, hallelujah, praise God. You get up off your knees, praise God, knowing that you have received, praise God, what you position God for. Is that all right? And you start telling folk, it's only a matter of time. I didn't already receive it. Where did you receive it? I received it in the spirit. I heard it in the spirit. Come on, that's what, he, that's what the prophet said. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain, but it ain't raining yet. It doesn't matter. I've already seen it. I've already heard it. Hallelujah. I may not see it, but I know it's working out for me. Praise God, because I received it. I've already prayed about it. While you trying to figure it out, ooh, he's already worked it out. He's already worked it out. He's already, let me, let me keep going. Hope is the future tense. Something we expect to happen in the future. Hope is one of the finest, praise God, the finest responses of faith which the human spirit is capable of. Come on, I just read it to you. Now may the God of hope fill you, Romans 15 and 13, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. My God, Ooh. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm trying to get to. I want God to fill me, praise God. The God of hope will fill you with joy and peace and believe. I don't want to be believing God mad, angry, with an attitude, praise God. And you telling folk you in faith and you mad as a pit bull. I can't get nobody in here. You, you mad. You don't want nobody to speak to you. You got rotten fruit of the spirit, praise God. Your attitude is nasty. No, no, no. No, no, God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace while you believe. Not when you get the manifestation of it, but even while I'm believing. Hallelujah. And so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Christ in you, 
the hope of glory. I got an expectation that we're going to another, that we're going, praise God, to another realm of glory. He takes us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Is that all right? Hope is one of the finest response, responses that the human spirit is capable of. How, can, can I tell you how powerful hope is? Can I stir you up tonight? Hope is hope that's kept people alive. It's people that were fighting unbearable conditions and they were sustained because hope was alive. Many people have died. I can't get, they've given up things. They threw in the towel, praise God, because they lost hope. Because while they were in the midst of some things, praise God, their strength waxed small and they gave up hope. And, and, and see, one of the things I do, praise God, when people come to me and ask me for prayer, praise God, I ask them, do you still got any fight left? Woo, my God, because I can stand with you if you still got fight, but, but we need to be on the same page. Is that, do you have any fight left? Praise God, because I get in the ring and fight with you, but I ain't going to be fighting by myself. Is that all right? Do you have any fight left? Are you still fighting the good fight of faith? Have you given up that God is going to, do you still believe God's going to bring this nation through? Do you believe that God is going to bring these United States of America through? Do you believe that on the other side of this, praise God, we're going to see the mighty hand of God? Do you believe? Do you see what God is doing? Do you believe that there's revival that's going to be breaking out in the land? You, do you have any fight left? We're called to fight the good fight of faith. Hope is a vital part of our spiritual and natural Life. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Write that in. I'm not Jesse Jackson, but, but just say keep hope alive. Keep, keep hope alive. <laughs> keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Hope is future tense. It's having an expectation of something, of something happening in the future. We have hope that Jesus Christ will return for his church. Oh, and that's a glorious hope. We know this is going to happen, praise God, hallelujah, and we continue to hope for it. We rejoice in the knowledge of it happening, praise God, but it's still something that will happen in the future, and so we apply hope. Galatians 5 and 5 says, for though, for, for we through the Spirit by faith are waiting for the hope of righteousness. There it is again, faith and hope. Romans uh, 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 8 and 24 says, for we hope, for in hope we have been saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is already seen? Is that all right? Praise God. Hallelujah. And God says he needs you to see through the eyes of faith. And sometimes you got to say, God, open the eyes of my heart. I, I want to see you. Praise God. I'm hoping. I'm hoping in something that hasn't manifested yet in the natural. I may be believing you something that no, I may be believing you for something that nobody in my household is believing. Hallelujah. I'm believing you to go further than anybody else in my family have gone. Praise God. And so though I may not see it, I still have hope for it. When we're hoping, we're hoping for something in the future. We should never hope, praise God, that God is hearing our prayers. Hopefully he'll answer our prayer. No, we know by faith, is that all right, that he's going to do exactly what he said. Is that all right? God comes to give us a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Another translation says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, hallelujah, thoughts of peace, thoughts to give you a hope and a future. Can I keep going? Do, do, do you have any more capacity tonight? Praise God. Holly, come on, pull up to the table. I'm about to put a second helping on your plate tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we have to start speaking faith and speaking hope. Let us hold fast to our profession of faith, for faithful is he who has promise. Go to Luke 17, verse 4 through 6. Luke 17, if you're writing notes, verse 4 through 6. Praise God. Luke 17, verse 4 through 6. Very familiar passage of scripture. And it says, and if he sins against you seven times in a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord says, if you had the faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this small berry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now, I don't know about you, but I've read this section of scripture for many years without picking up the full meaning of what Jesus was saying to the apostles. 
Jesus had already, I want to focus on verse six, but it's the surrounding verses that make this verse so important. Jesus had already been teaching his disciples about faith, but this lesson was not a lesson on faith, praise God, but on forgiveness. So you may be asking yourself, well, what does this scripture on forgiveness have to do with the message of faith and hope? I'm glad you asked. We have to change the way we think and the way we choose to respond to situations. And I don't know about you, hallelujah, but that's many of our humble cry. Lord, help me to change the way I respond to situations. Come on, because if you tell the truth, praise God, hallelujah, most times, praise God, the first reaction you get to when you got some situation that you don't like is not, he come my shot. Come on here, praise Praise God. It's not dancing in glory, glory. Come on. Sometimes, you know, that flesh wants to rise up. Your emotions get all out of whack. Is that all right? And this was the point that Jesus was making to his disciples. In Luke 17, it starts out with Jesus explaining to the disciples, praise God, that stumbling blocks or issues, praise God, will come that may cause you to stumble. That there's going to be some stumbling blocks or issues that may cause us to stumble. And he said they will come. Can I go a little further to help you tonight? These issues sometime will come in the form of people. Woo. And that's why if you don't do nothing else in this hour, you better say, I'd rather obey God than man, praise God, and get delivered from people. It's better to put your trust in God than to put your trust in man. Because sometimes stumbling blocks, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, will come in the form of people. You did run well, but who did hinder you? Was it people? Was it church folks? Was it folks in your family? Was it people in your job that got you off track? Was it that you were wounded by a leader in church and you were looking to them, but not looking above them to him? Sometimes the stumbling blocks, the issues will come in the form of people. And Jesus was telling his disciples, this is written, Jesus was telling his disciples to be on guard and to be watchful for these times. And then Jesus says something very interesting. He says, he tells his disciples that if a brother or sister sins against you, we should rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Now, that don't seem, that don't seem like a hard thing to do, especially the rebuking part, because, you know, some of us love to just put people in our place, in their place. <laughs> Sometimes we love the people to tell people about themselves. They're all right. And he said, they sin against you. We should rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And so that's good. Okay, we can do that, Jesus. But then he goes further and said, then he tells the disciples, if the brother sins against you seven times in a day and comes back seven times, praise God, and asks for forgiveness, then they were to be forgiven. Now, everything was fine up until that point. The disciples were with Jesus and in agreement until Jesus said that thing about forgiving somebody seven times in one day. Oh, come on. I'm coming right to where you are. Praise God. Jesus said, praise God, hallelujah. The disciples could understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus was not saying to keep count of offenses. That wasn't the reason he was saying this. He wasn't saying to keep account of their offenses, praise God, up to seven times in one day and then all bets is off. Jesus was saying anytime someone sins against you, hallelujah, and asks for forgiveness, godly sorrow, is that all right? Regardless of the sin, we are to forgive them. That's what Jesus said. Is that all right? Let me help you because I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Praise God. Regardless of the sin, we ought to forgive them. Praise God. Now listen, just because I forgive you don't mean that I won't side eye you. Just, just that I forgive you don't mean I'm not watching anymore. Just because I forgive you don't mean that all my discernment go out the window. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Just because I forgive you don't mean we may come back like that. Not right away anyway. Is that all right? Praise God. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Time will tell. Is that all right? Praise God. And it's amazing to me. Folk will do you wrong and do all type of offenses against you and want to come right back in your life like ain't nothing happened. Oh, I'm sorry. There's an elephant in the room. 
There's something we got to address before they can be reconciliation. Come now and let us reason together. Is that all right? But this is so deep. That's not the point. of That was just for free. That's not the point of what I'm saying. Uh, what, what was more, what, what, this, was, this was more than the disciples could understand or reconcile. They couldn't wrap their minds around that, Father, if somebody came to me seven times in one day and repented, praise God, and I need to do it, they couldn't wrap their minds around it. So they asked Jesus, increase my faith. <laughs> Ooh, cause, cause you didn't ask the hard thing. Increase my faith. I don't know if I can do this one. I need an increase of faith. My faith need to come up to be able to do that. Is that all right? But I love Jesus. Can I mess with you on a Wednesday? <laughs> Jesus responded by saying, "Praise God." See, see, praise God. The disciples they knew that their flesh couldn't measure up to this standard, and so they asked for more faith. How many times we do that? The Lord requires something. God, you got to give me more faith to do that. You got to give me four more faith. I don't know if I could do that. Praise God. But Jesus responded like this. He was cold blood. He said, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in by the sea and it would obey you. And there's three concepts I want to give you, and I'm going to let you go tonight. Three concepts I, wanted, I want you to get from this verse, praise God, uh, when combined with what the disciples asked of Jesus. Praise God. Now, 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 let me help you. The disciples did not ask for faith. They asked that their faith be increased. The first concept I want you to understand tonight, praise God, is that you have enough faith. He's given every man a measure of faith. You have enough faith. I have enough faith, praise God. You got, you got to believe that I have enough faith for this trial. I got enough faith for this task. I got enough faith for this pandemic. I got enough faith to go through this. I, I got enough faith to endure this, praise God. I got enough faith to deal with this thing in my marriage. I have enough faith to believe God for my children. I have enough faith, praise God. It's already within you. Notice, notice Jesus did not tell them they needed more faith. He basically told them, praise God, hallelujah, what they had was more than enough. Praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody write that, what I have is enough. What I have is enough. Praise God, hallelujah. And I know many of you got faith, praise God. I know if you're a part of this ministry, praise God, you're under strong word. You're under strong faith teaching and preaching. Hallelujah. Many of you, praise God, have seen God do the miraculous in your life. There's faith on the inside. You didn't seen mountains move before. You have seen walls come down before. Praise God. See, our problem is we asking God for more, hallelujah, when we haven't used what we have. And the Lord said, you asking me for an increase of faith, and I'm trying to let you know, praise God, that if you have a little bit of faith, what you can do. What do I say? Praise God, hallelujah. Jesus said, he said, let me help you. If you got mustard seed faith, a mustard seed is the smallest kind, uh, praise God, uh, of smallest of its kind, yet when that seed is planted, it can grow into a large tree, praise God, some reaching 15 feet in height. What Jesus was saying, hallelujah, is that you don't need more faith. They needed to use what you already had. If a mustard seed faith can, can move a mulberry tree, you don't think the faith you have can help you deal with offenses? And how many times we pray, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase. And the Lord, if you got faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move some things. Is that all right? Hallelujah. You can get a miracle with a mustard seed. Oh, my God. You keep discounting where you are in God and you keep letting the devil beat you up because you're not where you think you need to be. Praise God. Bump all that. Praise God. Such as I am, I give unto thee. I am who I am by the grace of God and I'm going to use what I have. Praise God. Let me help you now. One of my strongest gifts of the spirit is the gift of faith. I've seen God do some miraculous things. I've been preaching for years. I've seen God heal meningitis. I've, I've seen God, praise God, raise up folks even in our church off their sick bed. Praise God. I've seen God open up barren wombs. I've seen God, hallelujah, reduce jail sentences. I'm not telling you nothing I heard. I'm telling you what I, I know. Praise God. I've seen God do some miraculous things. And, 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 and I've been through some things. And my faith is stronger than it's ever been right now. But in previous seasons of my life, my faith was not as where it is right now. But I had enough measure for that season. I can't get nobody in here. 
And if you learn to work what you got, if you learn to work with what you got, God will use it and, and, and get the glory out of it. Hallelujah. Now my faith grew because I used the mustard seed. Not because I got increased, but I used the mustard seed. The increase came because I used the mustard seed. See, you praying for stuff that you ain't using. <laughs> Praise God. You praying for God to do something else, you ain't worked what you already got. That may not be proper English, but it is the word of the Lord. You, you're not even working what you have, but you want God to do something else, but you're discounting what you already have. And let, let me help you. I don't care who you are. Don't be ashamed at your level of your level. Use what God gave you for his glory. Is that all right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to use my faith. Hallelujah. You got to write that. I'm going to use the faith, the measure. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to use the measure. Well, you know, I'm not the pastor. Well, I don't have the title. I'm not the evangelist. Praise God. Bump that. Use the faith you have. And when you start using what you have, increase will come to it. It's when you faithful or you steward a little, God causes it to grow. It's when you walk in the measure of the anointing that you have that God will cause it to grow. Is that all right? Hallelujah. You know, if you're working out, you don't just go to the weight bench, praise God, and just start adding weights. No, you've worked at another weight, praise God. Is that all right? You done worked on 25 for a while. Now I can add five more. Now I can add 10 more. Pray. You don't just start jumping over stuff, but I promise you, if you work within what God has you, you will see manifestation in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. You telling God, increase your faith, but you ain't using what you got. Let me keep moving. I hope this is blessing you tonight. The disciples were hoping for more faith. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do through this pandemic. I need more faith. You got faith. Use what you got. What God has prepared you for in the last season, praise God, is going to get you through these times. When the disciples first heard what Jesus said, they immediately went into the mode of hope, a desire for faith. I need more faith. Is that all right? Jesus told them, you have enough. Is that all right? You have enough. <laughs> Somebody to give God praise that you have enough, that you have enough. Praise God. Hallelujah, that you have enough. Now, the second concept, the second concept that I want you to see as it pertains to those things and thought patterns, praise God, that hinder us from exercising faith. When Jesus told the disciples about forgiving someone seven times in one day, their minds immediately went to a natural way of thinking. Oh, come on, you know how we do, praise God. Sometimes God speaks some big stuff over our life, and you be like, that's too deep. Wait a minute, that's too big. <laughs> Whoa. And you go straight natural. You go straight carnal. You be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lord, I heard what you said. You calling who? Who gonna do what? And we got a prophetic word that was so big for you, you're like, whoa, hold on. Woo -hoo. That's big. See, in the natural, we give someone, because in the natural, you know, they, 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 they heard what Jesus said, but, but their brain went natural. Because in the natural, we give somebody one or two chances, maybe three. Three strikes you definitely out. Is that all right? Praise God. Before we literally cut you off. Is that all right? Hallelujah. But Jesus, but spiritually, praise God, we never cut off when they truly repent. Is that all right? Praise God. And, and listen, and listen, even if you don't come back together like you was, that means I don't, hug, grow, I, do, I don't hold grudges against you. I don't hate you. I don't wish you ill will. Is that all right? Because God is love. And why am I holding things against you? Praise God. And God has forgiven me for so much. He's forgiven me for so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. The disciples, praise God, couldn't see how they could do this. And so they asked for an increase of faith. And Jesus' response he gave them was an example that, that, that they could use when addressing their way of thinking in the natural. Is that all right? And Jesus wanted them to focus on what you could do with just a little bit of faith. See, the devil will rob you of right now, praise God, always trying to magnify what you don't have. But if you ever get grateful, you will see that you have more than enough. Is that all right? If you ever get the realization that God puts a good deposit in you, now we have this treasure in earth and vessel. If you ever get the revelation of who you are in Jesus Christ, don't you discount nothing that God has given you. Don't you discount nothing that he's assigned to the works of your hands. Jesus said, let, let me show you. Let, let me show you what you could do with just a little faith. Jesus. He said, with a little faith, you could say to this mulberry tree, get up, be uprooted, and be planted by the sea. 
<laughs> you ain't got to increase the faith for that. That's just what a mustard seed. The term uprooted means to rip something out of the ground by its roots. This is not a situation where someone hopes that a plant will be removed, but actually does something to make it happen. Ooh. Once it's ripped up by its roots, Jesus said, plant it by the sea. Now that sounds like a weird request. And I can understand if he said plant it by the sea, plant it by, if he said plant it by the sea or throw it in the garbage dump, but he said plant it in the sea. Now in this example, praise God, we, we find a way to deal with wrong attitudes in their cases, thinking they needed more faith in order to walk in this type of forgiveness. Is that all right? And in this case of the disciples, their way of thinking about their situation as it pertained to forgiveness needed to be uprooted and planted in the sea. Pulling a plant by its roots ensures, praise God, that it will not grow back. If you plant it somewhere else, it'll continue to grow. If I plant it by the dumpster, it might take root. But if I plant it in the midst of the sea, I'm getting happy tonight. If I plant it in the midst of the sea, it'll never start growing again. Is that all right? Plant it in the sea, you guarantee that it will not grow again. The sea is made up of salt water and salt water will not allow the plant to grow because the salt will kill it. When you plant something in seawater, it becomes a dead issue. And God says, you don't need to jump, stop praying that Lord, you stop. You ought to start praying, God, take it up by the root. Uproot everything in my life that's not like you. Fear, I, unroot, I uproot you. Rebellion, I uproot you. Sickness, I uproot you. Depression, I uproot. Take it by the root. Take it, oh, glory to God. Take it by the root. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying that anything that stands in the way of you exercising your faith must be pulled up by the root, praise God, and cast into the sea so that it dies. I don't know about you, but I know God to be a strong deliverer. And I'm telling you, many of you that's been bound by strongholds and many of you that's been bound by addictions, God says, I got you in a still place and the sword of the Lord is coming to you you and he's breaking every chain he's breaking every fetter that comes to hold you back why don't you give God praise hallelujah hallelujah because roots are being uprooted in this season take it by the root take it by the root Take it by, I don't need you to leave no stumps around me. The stump will grow back. Take it up by the root. Is that all right? And you must actively do this. You cannot sit around hoping that stuff will change. You must make it happen. I say you can't just sit around hoping stuff will change. You got to make it happen. How do you make it happen? By faith. Because faith is action. Without faith, it's impossible. I mean, without fa faith without works is dead. <laughs> oh, Lord, I hope this is helping you tonight. My God, hoping this situation is not appropriate because you're not taking action. Some of you, praise God, have hope. You, have, you got more hope than you got faith, and you backwards. Because you got more hope than you have immediate action. You hoping for something that you ain't got no action behind. Oh, Lord. If you, and your hope is empty, praise God, because it's founded on nothing. Is that all right? Pray, you, I don't, you can hope to lose weight all day long. You can hope that, praise God, but until I actively do something, it won't happen. See, now faith activates, oh God. Faith involves an immediate response. And this brings me to my third and last concept. The third concept that I want you to grasp is that we must speak, not just hope. Speak faith. Is that all right? Jesus told the disciples, watch this, to speak to the mulberry tree. He said, and it would obey you. That word obey in the Greek means to, to submit and obey. In order for the tree to be moved, they would have to speak. Not hope or just wish for it to happen. The word says, praise God, in the Greek depicts a strong, stern, serious, deeply felt kind of speaking. This is not a person that mutters. Hey, Mr. Mulberry Tree, will you get up and move? No, 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 that, that's, that's not what God is saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. No, 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 no. Praise God. You know, let me give you an example. When you ask your children to do something, do you think about, and praise God, hoping they'll do it, or do you speak to them to do it? Come on here. Now, now, what happens when you calmly speak to them and tell them to do those dishes and they, and they don't move? 
No, 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 no. You, 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 you know, you take it up another level. Praise God. Because the normal response is to speak a little louder and with authority. You know, and if you got some real mamas, you said, did you hear what I just said? I asked you to get up. I can't get nobody in here. And then they want to be tripping. Mama, why are you speaking to me that way? Well, I tried to say it <laughs> and you didn't move fast enough. Is that all right? And that's what the Lord says. When you're ready to move some things in your life, you stop cowering down. You stop being passive, but you stand up in your God-given right. You use your believer's authority and you begin to speak to mountains. You begin to speak to the mulberry tree. You begin to speak to things that's standing in your way and you start saying, I take authority over you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ain't praying no patty cake, patty cake, baker's ma'am with coronavirus. We speak into this that you must flee, that you must pass. Well, they marveled at Jesus. He was on the ship and the waves and there was in a storm. It looked like they was going to sink. And they said, who is this man that even the wind and the waves, they obey? Is that all right? They'd be like, why you, why you treat me so loud? Why, why are you talking so loud? Why are you, why are you so loud? Well, the first time you didn't understand. Hallelujah. Praise God. And this is how you must speak the word of God over your situations with authority. Is that all right? And let, let folks be like, why are you talking like that? Because I'm taking authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just, 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 just write that down. In your home, touch somebody and say, watch your tone. Watch your tone. Because it may be time for your tone to change. There's a different intensity. Praise God. And folk may not be able to handle you in this season, but you got to say I'm stirred up in my faith, for I believe, therefore I speak, and I'm speaking like I'm believing. <laughs> I said I'm speaking like I'm believing. Watch your tone, watch your tone, watch your tone. Hey, watch your tone, watch your tone. You speaking like you're ready for a breakthrough. You speaking like you're ready for victory. You speaking like things about to turn around. You speaking like prodigals about to turn. You speaking like things are getting better. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. And see, when you start speaking like that, folk don't know what you're working with. Ah, but I am who I am by the grace of God. When you've had enough, when you've had enough, praise God, and you're ready to make some things change, you start setting some things in order. Is that all right? And when, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, I don't wait on my prayer partner. When you get tired enough, you don't even wait just to call the bishop or the pastor. When you get tired enough, you start standing up in your own house and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Is that all right? You start taking authority over your own body. You start taking authority over your own thoughts. You start laying hands on your own self. See, you really want to be anointed, lay hands on your own self. Hallelujah. We want to run and lay hands on everybody else. But when you really anointed, I can lay hands on my own self. Come on, you that deep, start prophesying to your own self. When the last time God gave you a word about you? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Let me, let me close, let me close, let me close, praise God, because there's, there's many believers in the world trying to handle things on their own because doubt has rooted itself so deeply and their faith is hindered. But it's time to start speaking with authority. Speak God's word over your situation and take authority. Come on, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the hope of glory. You know, but before one of the last services, praise God, that we had in this building, praise God, my wife gave a prophetic export, exhortation that even when we were in the beginning of this thing, of this COVID-19, praise God, hallelujah, she gave an expectation and there will be glory. After this, and I'm telling you, we ran and we shout, we shouted, and times got better. Why? Because we really believe that. And when you believe it, your posture changes. When you believe it, you can praise God in the midst of anything. Praise God. You know, deliver me from people that just got to wait till the battle is over to shout. I ain't got to wait till the battle is over. I can shout right now because I believe I've received ED. I believe I received. This faith is action instead of ver faith is action instead of hope with no action. Can I help you? If you do not take authority over our flesh, our emotions, our thoughts, they'll continue to dominate us and hinder us from exercising our faith. If we're gonna stand against, if we're gonna stand up against, we gotta speak in authority and cast things in the sea. Is that all right? Hallelujah. You start saying, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Huh? 
Anybody out there got faith like me that the enemies you see today, you will see no more. Anybody got faith like me to say my last time was my last time. <laughs> oh my God. That's why you got to go through this test and pass it. So you ain't got to repeat this again. So I'm closing. Praise God. Although the believer, we cannot allow hope, which is much easier to walk in to hinder us from exercising faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It gives me the, and the people that know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploits. Many of us are hoping for a resolution or a situation. Is that all right? Praise God. And you can hope like that when your faith is intact. You hoping for a new job, hoping for a financial breakthrough. Is that all right? Hoping, praise God, that your kids will start acting right. Hoping, hoping, hoping. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you can hope when you got, when you got faith, when you operate in faith. It goes together. Why are you so hopeful? Folk will be mad at you. Why you got so much joy, even in a pandemic? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Is that all right? Why are you holding your head up? Pray. Everybody talking about you. Why are you holding your head up? Praise God, because if I lift up my head, oh, ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, the king of glory will come in because I got confidence in my God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have to move into that place. Move into that place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's time for us to stop just hoping, but stepping out in faith. Stepping out in faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have to move into, I, I believe God. Praise God. And we're praying all the way through this. We know things are happening in our economy. No, we know that things are being stirred up. Praise God. But we're praying. We have an intercessory team that's praying every day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're praying. We, this ain't no game. We ain't on here for show. Praise God. This is real talk. Praise God. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. I, I, I saw a clip. Praise God. One of the politicians in New York. Praise God. Hallelujah. Said that the decline of coronavirus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't have nothing to do with God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I beg to differ. Because I know it's some people praying. I know the church is praying. I can't get nobody in here. See, 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 the church house may be, but the church is wide open. The church is praying. It's somebody on their face calling on the name of the Lord. And we believe, therefore we speak. So I am hopeful. There will be a brighter day. You still have a future. You got to battle for your future. You still have a future. God will do what he said he will do. He's going to perfect everything that concerns you sooner or later. It's going to turn in your favor because it's working out for me. It's working out for me. It's working out for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to work your faith, folks. Work your faith because God will do exactly what he said 